Hi everyone, Ko here, so glad to have you back. This video is all about adding text to projects with precious tips for both beginners and intimate level users. Let's get started. When you want to create titles or add any kind of text to your clips, DaVinci Resolve gives you three options. Text, Text Plus, and Text 3D. And as the latest is a fusion-only option, we'll dedicate it another video. So for this one, we're going to focus on the text and text plus generators. Right to the point, let's see what those tools can do, what they have in common, how they differ, and some power tips. And for those of you looking for specific features, you will find chapters in the description so you can jump right to it. Both are available in the edit page inside the effects library in the title section. I am going to drag one of each to my timeline above a solid color generators and trim each clip to two seconds to make rendering more efficient. The text generator is simple, lightweight, and gives you rich text formatting, very much what you would find in Google Doc, Word, or Pages. Rich text means that formatting is encoded inside the text itself, but that formatting is easily shared between apps. Its styling and animation features might be limited, but it can also do things that the text plus generators cannot, like having on-screen control so you can select and manipulate your text right from the viewer. Well, that white overlay is pretty awful when you're working with bright background, and to be honest, I rarely use it. This text generator has all the common options like font type, style, size, alignment, position, but also offers extra effects like stroke, drop shadow, or background. I am not going to teach you how to use a text editor, but here's what you need to know. I can, for example, very easily format this text down to the character level by selecting any word or character and individually change size, font, color, and more. You can go pretty wild and quickly create something very visual with a single generator. There are a few controls that can be keyframed for animation, but as you can see, some of the main ones are not, so animation will stay pretty basic. Also, they all have a lock range that you cannot bypass by manually typing a higher value like you can for the text plus generator. You have to get used to how these controls behave and sometimes find a way around it. Like for example, that while position affects both the title and background frame, zoom doesn't. This can be good in some cases, but it also means that the only way to properly zoom in or out is to use the settings page controls as you would for any other clip. It works, but be aware that those controls control the whole image, not the content itself. And if you zoom too far in, you will lose definition. You can also get some cool effects and animation by using the pitch and your controls. The text per generator comes from Fusion and is packed with features designed for motion graphics, which means that every controls can be animated. Also, you will quickly notice that this tool can be resource hungry and that unlike the basic text generator, has to be rendered like any other Fusion composition. Let's check what are the few features that those two generators have in common. Most of the basics are here, even if controls are laid out a bit differently and that some rich text specifics are missing. But what you get is definitely making up for what you lose, with extra panels full of powerful controls. So much that going over everything that the text plus generator has to offer would take us hours. Instead, I'm going to give you a tool with an accent on very important features, while other very specific or fusion-only options will be covered in dedicated videos. Really, having to decide what we can show you is like having two awesome keys and having to decide which one we can take to this end. You can change the direction of text, which is essential for some languages, or creative styling, like writing vertically. With the right on control, you can play with this slider to reveal or hide the text. Add a few keyframes and you will get a cool animation. Next, tab spacing which is an often overlooked option that lets you create columns of text by typing the tab key between each element. I named those tab 0, 1, and 2, as this is going to be easier to understand how this is working. Button number 1 is tab 1, number 2, tab 2, and so on. Position lets you individually set the space between each tab, and alignment, how the text is aligned within each column. Tab 0 is then set as usual using the regular controls. Advanced controls are for overriding the kerning and styling defined in the active font. And I recommend that you play a little with those and check which of your fonts has multiple stylistic sets. Switching to the layout page, you will find a lot of options to tune and position your text. For example, I can change the type to circle and lower the width control to curve the text in a circle. 
Rotation is a really powerful one, as it will not only let you rotate your text in a 2D space, but also in a 3D one. You can also use this slider to reduce or accentuate the perspective effect. Rotation order defines in which order those rotations will be applied, and depending on what you choose, you will get a completely different animation. The background control gives you the equivalent of a solid color generator, but all in one tool. The transform page gives us the ability to transform our text at the character, word, or line level. And this can get pretty wild as you can combine any of those options. The shading page is where you might have the most fun, thanks to the ability to add up to seven extra instances of that same text, each with its own styling. Let's have some fun with this one. Instead of using a solid color, I would like to use an image to fill up the text. For this, set type to image, choose clip, and browse to choose one. You can then use the following controls to adjust how this image is going to be mapped to your text. Like this mapping level that I'm going to change to full image. Then I'm going to add another instance by selecting a second element and enabling it. The appearance is already set to outline by default, and I just need to change the color and raise the thickness. Let's add a third element. This time, it is a shadow by default, and I just need to customize it a little. A fourth one, with that gorgeous blue border thingy that is set as border fill. I think that we can make it look a little better. Let's set the opacity at 0.5, and change the color. Don't bother trying to use the color picker icon, as it doesn't work inside the edit page. Instead, open the color window, and use the pick screen color option to choose an on-screen color. Adding softness would definitely look great, but the default range isn't quite enough. That's not an issue, because I can override it by manually typing in 100 for X and 50 for Y. There, that's a lot better. Now, a poor tip about sort by, which is a feature that at first might be a little cryptic. By default, it is set to priority, which means that the element one will appear at the top, element two, under, and so on but you can individually override the position of each element by going to position and moving the priority slider. The other option is Z depth, which is letting you move each element on the Z axis inside the 3D space. For this to be more visual, I'm going to rotate my text at 75 degrees and inside position, adjust the Z offset for each element. When working with outlines, you might want to select Adapt to Perspective and maybe even Outside Only to make it look cleaner and more realistic. Okay, I kept it for the end. Here's how you format your text at the character level while using the Text Plus Generator. This requires to make a quick jump to the Fusion page, but it is super easy. Right-click inside the Text Input field and choose Character Level Styling to activate the Modifiers tab. And with this, any character or word that is selected using the on-screen control can be individually formatted. Awesome. And last, the most important tip for any fusion effect that you use inside the edit page. Do not ever, ever click on that send me right to hell button that you find inside the inspector. This would completely and irreversibly wipe out your title with nothing that you can do to retrieve it. This really has to be fixed as you can lose hours of work just with one wrong little click. All right, that's a wrap. We hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, give it a like and we'll see you in the next video. See ya.